Bonzo is a word specifically for African comics and cartoons. Having an individual term allows for South African work to manifest different storytelling conventions and narrative ideas without existing Western or Eastern preconceptions. The word is derived from the Swahili word kibozo, meaning cartoon, but also shares meaning in Shona as the word bone, as many South African cultures believe that stories are the bones by which a culture is held together. And this shared meaning reflects our pan-African roots. Afro manga is a relatively new phenomenon in South Africa, considering that Siri Watu is the very first bonzo Afro manga. This is not to say that South African comics have not existed in the past. Properties such as Super Strikers debuted in 2000 and continues being produced to this day, as well as a cartoon adaptation with seven seasons. Afro manga is not to be confused with Afri Comics, a propaganda peddling company from the 70s in apartheid stricken South Africa. Two popular pro apartheid comic book properties from this company were Mighty Man and Tiger Ingwe. But consumption of comics and related media is growing in South Africa. 2013 saw the biggest ever free comic book day event organized in Cape Town by Reader's Den and the 2014 Reader's Den free comic book day event saw the launch of 15 new South African comic books. Comic-Con Africa debuted in Johannesburg in September 2018. With the rise of comics in general, we also get the rise in niche markets such as graphic novels and manga. I would recommend reading Rise of the Otaku, investigating the anime fandom in South Africa for more information on the influences of anime and manga in South Africa. I've put a link to this thesis in my description down below. But as the consumption of comics and manga in South Africa increases, we can only hope to see a rise in the number of Bonzo comics and Afro manga. So let's actually move this video essay across to the very first Bonzo slash Afro manga ever, Siri Watu. Siri Watu is inspired by the real life myth and folklore of the lost city of the Kalahari and Great Zimbabwe, of African people that even history books have lost knowledge of through the ages. The Kalahari myth was actually started by William Leonard Hunt, the first known white man to cross the Kalahari Desert on foot and survive. While no great city was ever found in the Kalahari, even after additional airplane searches were conducted by Joshua Haldeman, the grandfather of Elon Musk, Great Zimbabwe does in fact exist. The majority of scholars believe that it was built by the ancestors of modern Shona people in Zimbabwe. But we enter the world of Siriwatu through Diallo, Ayanda, Senzo and Zita, four young Siriwatu unaware of their heritage. Called by the worlds beyond to inherit a legacy, they must learn who they are by a destructively quirky old man bent on turning them into the descendants he believes them to be. So let's jump right into my review. So guys, let's just jump right into my review of Siri Watu. And thank you so much to Awali Comics who actually sent me through a copy for this so I could review it. Guys, seriously, you can also check out his uh, website. It's down in the description below. But let's jump right into this review. I would say straight off the bat, I definitely felt like there was definitely inspiration from Avatar and The Legend of Korra. I was reading The Legend of Korra comic book the other day and I felt like the art style was incredibly, incredibly similar. The biggest difference being that the lines and out, the outlines of the characters were much darker in Siri Watu. So if you're a fan of the Avatar art style, I think this is definitely a comic book or graphic novel that you can jump right into and enjoy. But ultimately we follow a group of friends and once again I can see Avatar parallels because these friends end up getting elemental powers and that's our journey with them as we see them engage with enemies and discover who they are and what their powers are. So this, I'm constantly seeing parallels between Avatar, Korra and then this graphic novel, but that doesn't take away from its originality. This is an incredibly original story that you can enjoy, get behind and really immerse yourself with. I think especially as South Africans, there's a lot in the story for us to really engage with and enjoy. Something as simple as seeing a taxi in the background really just made me feel like I was reading a story that was based in South Africa. Of course, and we also get local colloquialisms, different African languages seeping in. And what's great is on the front page, we also get a translator for all of these different South African terms. So even if you aren't as clued up with you know, South African slang, or if you're not familiar with the basics of different languages, you can understand the story because everything is given to you and translated really nicely at the beginning of the story. I think the pacing in the story was also great. I've recently been reading a lot of Jupiter's Legacy, which is probably my favorite graphic novel for the last little while. 
but I feel like there's definitely some pacing issues there. They're jumping through timelines, they're jumping through events at a rapid pace. You don't have that with this novel. You're really able to dissect everything that's happening. You're able to engage everything that's happening with these characters. And the pacing also leads into the choreography. The choreography and the action set pieces for this series is great. You can really see what's happening. Something that is very often brushed through in other graphic novels or even comic books. Very often we pick up comic books, especially Marvel or DC, for the action set pieces, and they're over within a few pages. Here, we get to see exactly what's happening. We see the characters' understanding of battles, and we see them learn as they fight, which is great. And I also just love the designs of the characters. The character that stood out for me the most, you're gonna see her on screen now, she's basically the creature that gives our, our main characters their powers, and I just loved her design. It was so incredibly unique. And that feeds into all of the characters. We get such unique characters and the designs are great. And they're so South African. Like, just look at this guy. Like, he's, he's crazy. The only issue, the biggest issue I have with this, with this book, and I feel like a lot of people might agree with me on this, is for lots of the pages, we just get a lack of background. We just get one color or a gradient of colors. And while this isn't a train smash, it can lead to some confusion to the surrounding areas of the characters, especially in tense moments when there's action sequences or they're introduced into a new area or location. You want to be able to see what the characters see. And when we're just getting a splash page or a simple black blank background, you lose that idea of area. You lose that idea of space. And so it, can, it kind of becomes a little bit tricky to navigate where the characters are. But besides that, this is definitely a graphic novel series that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. And I would really recommend to everyone who enjoys graphic novels, who enjoys comic books, go and check out Siri Watu because it is a great read. But guys, thank you so much for watching my brief history as well as my review of this comic book. I really do appreciate it. Again, go down into the description, check out Awali Comics website, go buy his stuff. He's incredibly talented, he's great. And I'd love to know what you guys think of everything down in the comments below. Hey Caleb, huge thank you for the shout out and the segment. So I'm a massive fan of anime and manga, but I'm also a historian obsessed with secret people and ancient civilizations. So inspired by the lost city of the Kalahari and the great Zimbabwe, Zero Two follows four teenagers that discover they're part of a secret empire of people that vanished into exile long ago. Now, as they are hunted by a sinister collective known as the Iraksa, a destructively quirky old man puts them through a trial of childhood games just to turn them into who he believes them to be. They are those who are whispered about, of a secret people that disappeared into the chasms of African history. They are the descendants of the Siriwatu. Are you ready to find them?